Thank you. And I'm going to start with thank you for the promotion. I'm not a doctor. I'm an epidemiologist and a nurse. So thank you. <laughs> My dad would be proud. Um, but um, we're, we're here to talk about, um, about waste, about the managing household waste. But what we're really here to talk about is why is that? And that's because you have the waste, you have the needles, the needle sticks cause disease, and the diseases are pretty doggone serious. And so um, I'm going to spend just a few minutes, and I kind of jacked up on coffee so I can talk kind of fast. <laughs> um, but I'm going to talk about the diseases, and I'm going to give you an overview of the illnesses. And so what we want to do is we want to prevent exposure, and then when we prevent exposure, we're going to prevent illness and hopefully prevent death. <clears throat> Oh, I had this working a minute ago. So far, all the yeah. Are okay. <clears throat> anyway. Okay. One of the things is that I'm I'm really so delighted with this group that what we're doing is looking at solutions. But I am going to tell you about the problem. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is first of all, with an exposure, you run a risk of infection. And just a little bit of a background. Um, the risk of infection depends on a number of things. You've got to worry about the pathogen involved, the virus, the bug, the type of exposure. Here we're talking about needle sticks. The amount of blood involved, and with a needle stick we really don't know. <clears throat> and then the amount of virus in the blood of the person, and that's the person the needle came from. Um, you have to look at the amount of virus, and unfortunately in all of these exposure situations, this is something that we just don't know. So <clears throat> the diseases that we're worried about, um, you've heard of most of them, all of them probably. Three of them are viruses, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HIV, or the human immunodeficiency virus. It's the virus that causes AIDS. And I'm also going to mention a little bit about a bacteria, Clostridium tetani, or tet that causes tetanus. Now, I'm going to give you the real quick summary because this is really what I'm going to talk about. They're still there. The risk is there. Um, they're bad. They're real bad. You don't want to get it. We want to avoid them. We want to prevent them. So that's essentially my talk, but I'm going to give you a little bit more information on each of these. Yeah, so I'm done. <clears throat> the rest is just, so basically, now the, the numbers that we've got um, that, are, that are, a lot of them that are published have to do with um, occupational health in the hospital out in the real world, out in your settings, it's different. But these are just some numbers just to get an idea of some of the things going on. Um, now, in, since 1982, we saw a dramatic decrease in hepatitis B, occupational illness. And that was because of the vaccine. The vaccine came into play. It's a really great vaccine. Now, um, the, the numbers have dramatically dropped. And again, I don't think the, oh, the pointer does work. Um, in 1983, there were greater than 10,000 cases. It dropped down to less than 400, but there still are cases out there have to be concerned about, have to be worried about. Now, the risk of infection following an exposure. In a person who has been immunized, there is no risk. If in a person who has not been immunized, there is a 6 to 30 percent risk, and that depends on those variables that I mentioned how much virus was present, what stage of disease the person the needle came from um, was in, and um, that's their, their hepatitis E, their, oh, it's no longer working, their um, antigen status. Now, hepatitis is, um, it means inflammation of the liver, and there are a lot of different sources for hepatitis. <clears throat> and hepatitis B is one virus that causes hepatitis. Um, hepatitis C is a separate virus, a totally separate virus. Um, they're both very similar diseases, however, they're both transmitted by needle sticks and other means, but I'm only going to talk about that here. Now, um, about 30 to 50 percent of adults will have symptoms of hepatitis, and it includes these. There, a lot of them are really mild, fever, fatigue, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting. It's when they develop the jaundice the clay-colored stools and the dark urine that they begin to suspect that something is up. Now the severity, this is where it gets kind of nasty. It can be, people can have acute disease, they can have um, chronic disease. 
And the acute, it could range from a mild disease they don't know they have, or it could be fulminant, where they're very, very ill. And uh, the case fatality, it can be as high as 1%. Chronic infection, um, adults that get infected with hepatitis have a 15% chance of chronic infection, and this can cause liver cancer, cirrhosis of the liver, it could cause death. And um, just, you've got these statistics, I'm not going to go over them, but basically there are a lot of cases still out there with hepatitis B. And um, prevention, we have a vaccine, the vaccine is effective, need to use it. Now hepatitis C, again hepatitis C, is, it's real similar, it's a different virus, but it's real similar to hepatitis B. Um, it caused a lot of cases in, in healthcare personnel from needle sticks. It's felt to be about 3% cases in the population. In susceptible persons, it's felt that 1.8%, almost 2%, will develop infection following an, an exposure. Now, the symptoms, the symptoms are pretty similar. They, they actually are more mild. And years ago, we thought hepatitis C was no big deal. What we found was that hepatitis C it took a really long time to develop chronic illness, where after 10, 20 years, people got really sick, much more sick than with hepatitis B, liver cancer, chronic liver disease, and death. And so it's, it's um, probably, it's the most common, um, uh, common bloodborne pathogen that we see in this country, and it's also um, pretty deadly. Uh, now, acute infection, um, similar to hepatitis B. Um, a lot of people will clear it, but a lot of people will go on, most people, 75 to 85% will go on to develop chronic disease. So it's pretty awful. And again, the statistics here, um, what you want to note is that um, one to five will die from um, the consequences of hepatitis C. There we go. Okay, um, and there is no vaccine to prevent hepatitis C. <clears throat> HIV. Now, um, we've had HIV since about the early 80s. There have been 57 documented cases related to healthcare exposures and a number of other possible cases. And the risk of infection, um, about one in 300 following a needle stick exposure. The good side is that most cases will not lead to disease but the bad news is that many of them will lead to disease. Now, with HIV, it starts out with either no symptoms or flu-like symptoms that are really mild, and then the person could be healthy for a period of time. AIDS is a spectrum of illness, where it starts out with HIV infection, and it could progress to where the person is deathly ill. And the, the problem with HIV, as you probably know, is it's destruction to the immune system. and um, people have difficulty fighting infections and cancers, and it's the infections that kill them. So with, um, with this, there are medications, that's what's really good. They have to be taken for their life, they require monitoring, they're expensive, they have side effects, and again, people still will get infections, and there is no cure for HIV. These are statistics, there's still cases, a lot of cases out there, people living with AIDS in this country, so there's contaminated needles getting in our in our waste stream, and there is no vaccine. <clears throat> now I'm going to spend a quick minute on um, tetanus. It's a disease of the nervous system you've probably all heard of, and the reason why I mention it is because it's not a typical bloodborne pathogen, but if you get a needle stick, you run the risk of getting tetanus. The, it's a bacteria, Clostridium tetani, that's in the soil that could contaminate the needle, that could get into the person's body, and it leads to tightening of the muscles, lock jaw, um, which is where the jaw does lock up. It'll lead to death in one to 10 cases that are not treated. It causes spasms in the muscles that can cause arching of the back. It can cause fractures in the bone. It can cause, um, the, again, the difficulty swallowing and, um, and death. <coughs> and um, <coughs> the prevention, it's easily preventable. We have vaccines, Tdap, um, uh, the um, Tdap, um, uh, diphtheria, tetanus. There are a number of different vaccines that you can take. Everybody should get a booster every 10 years. All of you should get. Now, if a needle stick occurs, this shows what people should do: wash it, 
report it immediately is the key. It has to be reported immediately. And um, prevention is the key. The last thing I want to say, public responsibility, and here it's producer responsibility. We all have a responsibility to come up with solutions. And I'm really excited about this, that we will. But we have to remember there's personal accountability. Every single person working out there in the field needs to wear their protective equipment, get vaccinated, do what they can to protect themselves because things will happen, oopses, things fall out. We do all that we need to do, but still accidents occur. So we need to keep both things in mind. And with that, thank you for your time. <laughs>